In this video, I'm going to show you how to scrape salary data from salary.com for any job title that has reported salary statistics. As a bonus, I'll give you a list of over 300 US cities that you can use in your program to collect salary data for the same position across the United States. See the video description for a link to this CSV file. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let's see what we're going to scrape today. Navigate to www.salary.com. Click on the For You option at the top of the screen, and then enter a job title in the Know Your Worth section. I'm going to use the role Senior Accountant as an example. Depending on what you typed in, you'll likely get a list of results that show a job title and then a description of the job title. After reviewing the list of potential matches, click on the one that best matches your intended search. Hey, just a side note here. Depending on the job title you look up, you may run into a few different templates. The presentation of the material is different, but the code we write today for the scraper will work for all of them because the underlying data is the same. However, they do use different URL patterns, substituting the words alternate, listing, and benchmark, as you can see on your screen. If you happen to discover the reason for these differences, let me know in the comments below. Now back to the scraper. The next thing you'll see is a bell curve that represents the distribution of salaries for this job title, with markers showing the quintiles. Click on the link at the upper right hand corner that says view as a table. You'll see the same data except in a table format. This is the data that we want to scrape from the website. Take a look at how the URL is structured. You can see that the job title is hyphenated and has salary appended to the end. Now, currently I'm showing the stats for the entire United States. In order to make this more specific, pick a city by clicking the Change City button at the top of the screen. You can put in your city or select one of the recommended options. What you'll see now is a revised set of statistics for your locality. Also, take a look at the URL. You'll notice that the hyphenated location is added after the job title. With this in mind, you can see pretty clearly how to build a template URL for any job title and location. Okay, let's start writing some code. I'm going to code this project in a Jupyter Notebook, but feel free to use whatever IDE or code editor that you're most comfortable with. Start by importing some standard Python libraries. Ray, CSV, JSON, from time, import sleep. Next, import beautiful soup and requests. If you haven't installed either of these two libraries, you'll need to install beautiful soup using the command pip install bs4 and requests using pip install requests in your command prompt. Next, build the URL template for the pattern observed from the salary.com website. Replace the job title and the location with curly braces so that you can use string formatting to insert whatever job title or location that you want. Next, create variables for the position and city. I'm going to use Senior Accountant and Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, generate a URL using the template passing in position and city variables. Use the get method from the request library to send a get request to salary.com and assign it to the response variable. Now, use beautiful soup to parse the raw HTML that's contained in the response text using the default HTML parser. As you know, there are a lot of strategies that you can use with web scraping. The strategy we're going to use on this project is to extract JSON formatted data that's embedded in a script tag. To see this for yourself, go back to the web page, right click, and then click on View Page Source. This will show the underlying HTML. A lot of times the data that's used to populate a dynamic website is hidden in a script tag. If you scroll midway through the page, you'll notice a section that contains JSON formatted strings. There are two scripts in particular. One contains occupation related data and the other contains organizational related data. The occupation script is the one that contains the salary information that we want. You can see that we have both base and total compensation, along with quintiles and the occupation city. Taking a look at this script, there's unfortunately not a unique class or ID to identify it from any other script. However, the contents of these scripts is different, and we can find something unique about the text in this script to identify it. For example, you'll notice that there is an at type of occupation in the top script, and an at type of organization in the bottom script. So with this in mind, let's head back to the code. We can use the type property to identify the two scripts that contain JSON formatted data 
but this won't be specific enough to identify the one that we want. However, we can add to this filter a text keyword, and fortunately, Beautiful Soup allows us to filter tags with regular expression patterns. To compile a regular expression pattern, use the ray.compile method, passing in the string occupation. But make sure you prefix the string with an R to indicate that it should be interpreted as a raw string. If you don't do this, the pattern matching won't work correctly with Beautiful Soup. Now, use the find method of the souped object to find a script with a type of application ld plus json and with text that matches the pattern we created. If you print this script, you'll see that we've successfully identified the correct script. And now that we have the correct script, use the contents property to return the JSON string that's contained within the script tag. Now, this will return a list, so you'll need to index to the first item in the list to get the JSON string. Now, parse the JSON string with the json.loads function to convert this JSON string to a Python dictionary. Now that you have the data in a Python dictionary, you can index it as you would normally, extracting the data that you want. For this example, I'm going to grab the job title, description, location, and the base compensation statistics. Having this data for a single city is great, but wouldn't it be nice to have the salary stats for the same position for all of the largest cities in the United States? But first things first, let's generalize the code that we've written so far into a function, and then we can apply this function to a list of over 300 of the largest US cities. The function should accept two arguments, the job title and the job city. Next, add the template. Build the URL from the job title and the job city arguments. Send the git request and assign the return to a response variable. I'm going to add some error handling here. First, I'm going to check to make sure the status code is 200. If it's not, the git request was not successful, and this likely means that the job data doesn't exist for that particular city. I'm also going to handle a connection error. Next, parse the HTML data and extract the JSON string, converting it to a dictionary. Extract the salary data that you want. Finally, return the extracted salary data as a tuple. I extracted a list of over 300 US cities from Wikipedia and converted the city state to the appropriate format. You can download that list from the link in the video description. Now I'm going to open that list and read the cities into a cities variable. I'll print the first 10 cities here so that you can see what this looks like. Now I'm going to create a salary data list to collect all of the data. Then for each city in the cities list, I'm going to extract the salary data. And if there's anything returned from the function, I'll append it to the salary data list. Because I'm going to send about 300 Git requests and I want to be a good internet citizen, I'll pause between each request for about half a second to avoid spamming the server with requests. This will take about 10 to 15 minutes, so I'll go ahead and fast forward to the end. All right. Let's see the first few records to see what this looks like. Finally, save this data to a CSV file. Excellent. This code can be consolidated into a main function as well by copying and pasting the steps we just completed into a main function. Mm -hmm. 
And that's how you scrape salary data from salary.com. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. And if you haven't already, check out some of my other web scraping videos in this series. See you in the next video. Thank you.